in terms of the you know so drawing and painting you you were, you were saying is your your preferred mediums so. yeah that's why i enjoy the most yeah uh it, yeah drawing charcoal oil painting i do a lot of life drawing you know get models into the studio and just for enjoyment like not not professional like to sell my life drawings or anything but just i just really enjoy it right um and then oil painting i used to do gallery work uh back in 2000 like 6 to 2014 or something like that yeah um just do go, go on trips take a lot of photo reference get it all together figure out compositions put you know oil paintings together for uh, on based on my trip yeah um and then put those into the galleries but you know 2008 the the economy kind of crashed and right that i don't think the uh, the gallery business has ever recovered from that it doesn't seem like interesting know, in yeah. what way like what's changed like since so when the economy mm-hmm. crashed in 2008 like the first thing people stopped buying is fine art mm-hmm. <laughs> one of the first i mean the, a right. lot of a lot of things they stopped buying but fine art it's like it was like a a nice thing to have and and then so that killed the sales but then they never picked up because everything just kind of shifted online in a sense after that so a lot of artists are selling their own stuff now like i know a lot of fine artists that they just they grow their instagram and then they'll have studio sales on on their instagram and they'll just sell from yeah. that like so they're they're not people aren't necessarily going to galleries now to to view and purchase art uh, I mean, they are like not, it's not, not dead, but not on but, yeah. the level that they were not before. Before. That. before that was like the only way to sell art. Yeah, was, right. If you're a fine art painter, you got to be in a gallery. Yeah. Um, now there's other options. Sure. But yeah, so that's when I started. Is I was doing gallery work, putting my stuff in there, and it was rough because I entered the market right as the right on the down slope in right. that whole industry. And so that's why I, I was looking for other things to do. And then I started my YouTube channel. Um, so now when I paint, I don't try to sell. I don't do it for the galleries. I just, I just stash them away. And I just, I just a, do it because I like it. That's a very interesting transition. And I, I guess I wonder for somebody from your perspective who had that expectation of that kind of being how your career is going to go. And then it turns out that industry has changed. So you adapt to it. Do you find that? You're able to enjoy creating art more now that you're actually just kind of doing it to to share the process. Um, y- yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's different aspects of it. I mean, I I definitely enjoyed having the pressure of having to put a show together. Like, okay, my gallery's expecting you know ten pieces by the end of the year or something, and I need to create this thing and it's because i still had a lot of my own freedom to figure out what is it that i want to do but i did not enjoy the idea of having to create art that will sell right because there was specific things that the gallery was looking for because their audience wants that stuff yeah and i you know i didn't always want to paint that stuff and so having just complete freedom to choose whatever reference i want even if it's something other people might think is ugly Mm mm-hmm like, well, I think it's really interesting. I think yeah. those are cool shapes. I want to explore that without trying to make it attractive for, like, a, you know, someone who walks into a gallery looking to decorate their living room. Right. Um, so, yes, I definitely enjoy just painting without any kind of uh, pressure. Right. You get to focus on what you care about. And, yeah. I, and I would argue that, I mean, isn't that what it's actually supposed to be about? I mean, you throw commerce it into the mix and it, becomes, fine art, a, yeah. it becomes a job, but... The, the whole identity of what that originally became was about seeking out things that are unique and you find a, a taste or an interest that is, you know, that speaks to other people that share that same kind of taste and, and that becomes your audience instead yeah. of catering to the audience. And, and we deal with that, you know, we're talking a lot this weekend here about, you know, production and environment tools and creating content that's, you know, maybe for specific outlets. But yeah, that industry is fueled by, you know, hitting market quotes and like yeah you know like trends and what people want to see instead of giving them something and letting them decide if that's actually something they want or not yeah i mean illustration was always with a specific intent right you're illustrating something else an idea that someone else has but like for fine art yeah it's always been just like you you're creating you're just being creative on whatever um and 
but yeah, even then, even people that are able to just focus on their own thing, create whatever they like, and then gain an audience from that or a collector base from that, even they get kind of stuck with whatever they did initially mm -hmm. because they'll develop an audience that wants that look that they created. Right. And then if they start to diverge from it, that audience might be like, well, I, that's not what I want from you. Right. And then they'll be stuck doing that same thing for the rest of their life. Yeah. Um, Which is hard to accept in a lot of ways. Yeah. I find that, you know, I just feel like as I get older and I start to care more about, you know, the quality of things and, you know, it's easier, I think, when you're young and you just want to kind of like get into a, an industry or a thing and have a trade and a skill, yeah. you're, you're more, uh, I guess, easily adaptable to kind of what is asked of you. You're more hungry. Yeah, more hungry is probably <laughs> yeah. it, right? It's like, yeah. all right, cool. I'll, I'll do whatever. I'll, yeah, throw me whatever you got and I'll do it. And then yeah. eventually, if it doesn't suit your 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 internal needs, the things that yeah. you kind of fueled you, that you kind of grew up to be, eventually yeah. you kind of hit a wall where you can't surpass that you know thing. And, it, and, and that's where I think, uh, you know, art, art, creative blocks come in and like this inability to do what you love to do it's probably because you're not doing the thing that you actually love yeah. to do right yeah Absolutely. yeah yeah i think um it's fascinating to hear from other people's perspectives and it's so great to see somebody like you that has been able to kind of develop an avenue through adaptation in, in a response to an industry that you know yeah was once something and now is is changing and we just went through a pretty big shift as well with you know post post pandemic i think that also is affecting um just the collaborative experiences you know being okay. close to people kind of separating yourself with the software well the software shift, in particular i mean imagine working in a studio yeah and you're you're collaborating with artists and if you work yeah. in production and and you're in oh, a place I see. okay yeah and then you're at home and now you're in a google meet and you're kind of yep. in your own space for i think a lot of us that might actually be a good thing at times where it's less distractions and you can kind of just be at home in your own comfort and focus on your stuff but what how is what's your work environment do you spend a lot of time on your own creating stuff um so my studio is kind of part of my art studio is part of our office studio where we produce the videos. Um, so I do have my own private space where I could just work and focus. Um, but there's a lot of motion in there as well where people are setting up to record um, and people are editing the videos. So it's, it's fun. I definitely enjoy having the team there present yeah. in the office. A lot of creative energy that happens yeah. because of it that was not happening when we were working from home. Yeah. It's really hard to have the same kind of bond and like conversations that just like start with nothing, but lead to like the best idea. Right. That get millions of views all of us just like, just because we were just having stupid conversations. Yeah. It's like, what if we did this? Um, that like a scheduled meeting, you just don't get that. Yeah. Right. Like absolutely. Zoom, like, yeah, yeah I, th I agree. I, and I think each of us, it depends on, I think when you grew up, you know, the generational differences between us, like, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're probably a millennial generation. I assume that, you know, yeah, you I'm know, you're in your thirties, I'm born in 86, same year. Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, exactly the same year. So <laughs> what month? Uh, July. Uh, June. Okay. Okay. We're <laughs> super close. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Very close. And in the, the Gen Z is a slightly different, more, more adaptable to some of the social presences. Like we grew up with it, but we had a time in our lives where, you know, I remember when I got my first cell phone when I was 15 or 16 yeah. years old and I paid for it myself with a checkbook. I wrote a check and went to the mall and bought oh, a phone man. and like, and, and then Facebook comes out and, you know, I was right when I was getting into college and, you know, so we, we got a chance to see life outside of it. And I think that gives you a perspective to be able to disassociate your identity with this all the time. Yeah. It, it becomes a challenge still the more you're in it. And probably for you, for me being in purely in digital tools and in 3D production and working in VFX and, and yeah. you know, all of that, I've kind of been, it's, it's unavoidable. I kind of live in the internet these days, you know, on Slack and meetings and all that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of my time is digital as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I do. I draw for the videos. and But then after that, most of most of the work is actually just editing it. Um, and I do a lot of the, the drawings digitally now, too. It's, just like, easier to draw over my initial stuff, keep things clean. 
And like when you're presenting something in a video, a concept, it's better to have layers that you could like pull out and be like, these are the steps and all that, right. you know, that with traditional, you have to really plan ahead to like to separate incrementally it. explain yeah. the process. Right. And have all these separate drawings that show everything. Yeah. It's so much easier to just have a digital in a layer and just like pull it out. Right. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. It saves you so much time. And it, and it honestly probably helps you create content much easier in that, yeah. in that web fashion. It does. Yeah. So I've I do a guys, mix. Do a mix. You guys are over here on this side. And yep. um, I don't know if there's, do you have like a, a is there a website that we can maybe yeah. pull up some of Pro, the content Broker. here? Broker.com. You can uh, uh, load that up and then maybe that'll give us some a chance to show the viewers what is kind of happening but what i've seen uh here at lightbox is you guys have a camera you have a little light stage and you have a camera looking down and you're kind of just doing your thing yeah and capturing the the process just like a time lapse exactly and that's how we film at the studio this is our studio setup we just took it, it down and brought it here got it it looks <laughs> really great man it's yeah. such a great presentation yeah yeah um so yeah this is this is our website uh, Proco.com. Uh, so you go on it. There, there's our top courses. I actually just launched the Drawing Basics course that you see on top left there. It's the, for absolute beginners. Oh, uh, fantastic. I've never, it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. For, in the 10 years, I've never done a course for absolute beginners. Yeah. Um, and people think of us as the like the fundamentals place the place to go to get your fundamentals yeah and but this I, was like this later I, in the game just now i just launched pre-sale we didn't even start the course yet wow so right now it's on a discount because on pre-sale um so what are some of the i mean the foundationally what are some of these elements that you guys are adding into this basics course and, um so it's basically so art is a visual language or drawing and painting is a visual language there's other forms of art but yeah um and if you could speak the visual language you can communicate with pictures right like if you know how the vocabulary the grammar of how to put things together you can tell a story with just pictures no words no sound um and so we're i'm starting them with with lines right yeah line qual just getting getting them good habit good habits to have good quality lines um and then moving on to shape then some basic perspective and it's intuitive perspective we're not mm -hmm. going to go into math it's it's intuitive so that you can draw without plotting anything out um, close enough so it looks like it's accurate. Yeah. Because when you're sketching, like when you watch people sketch around here, they're not plotting perspective points and all that. Right. They, they know how to draw a box. It's just, just, just yeah. They, they know it. That's it's, innate. it's intuitive. And so when, I, when I'm going to teach it, it it's going to be intuitive perspective, just the basics of it, just enough to go on to the next thing, which is 3D form. Um, so shading using edges and values, yeah. putting it all together. And throughout the whole thing, I'm going to be giving them warm-ups that they can do every, every time they start a drawing session that will ingrain all these habits into them. And very project-heavy. This whole course is uh, about doing projects. And they post it in the community. I give them critiques. Um, I will show them how to do the projects as well so they yeah. can compare theirs to mine and learn from that. Um, but yeah, it's all those elements because every, whenever you look at a picture, it's basically shapes with a value with an edge between all the shapes mm. and that's it. Yeah. And once you add color for painting, yeah. that's the, the, the next one, but shape value edge makes up everything you look at. Yeah. Um, and then you have, uh, concepts that determine how you put your shapes and values and edges down. Like perspective will tell you what your shapes need to be, right? Like yeah. this shape needs to be tapering as it goes away. Yeah. Um, and light on form determines what the value is, how light or dark something is, and what is the edge based on the how round it is, how squared off it is. Um, so those are all concept concepts that determine how you say things. So you yeah. got the vocabulary and the grammar, but then you still need to know how to, uh, how to decide what to say in a beautiful way. Yeah. Right. So it's like a translation of uh, of words to kind of create your own visual vocabulary to exactly. kind of identify exactly those that. characteristics. And right. Say. And to a beginner, all of that probably sounds like I don't know what we're talking about. I, well, exactly. That's why. <laughs> that's why you take the course. But I mean, and right. I don't know how much you know about the magma. Uh, I mean, the magma. Uh, 
environment itself, the application itself, is web-based, and it's a collaborative thing. So it, it allows yeah. people to work in the same session. It, we're very much here trying to promote Magma as a production tool and conceptual design and, and yeah. uh, you know, working in storyboarding. But just from a fundamentals perspective, being able to you know, work with students in one session and to be able to be working in the same canvas but on totally different machines. And it's not yeah. an application that you need to launch. You can just access via web anywhere. Yeah. So you can have it on your iPad next to you. You can have it on your computer. And you can sort of interactively communicate with others visually if you like. You can write comments. You can make calls okay. within the application if you're working remotely, things like that. Okay. Um, but it's very much focused on offering some of the – just taking some of the digital tools that have been out there for painting and drawing and trying to make them more associative for artists and painters based on yeah. their feedback and okay. these things. Um, that's cool. Which is a lot, you know, of course. There's a lot to kind of throw into that. But in a yeah. nutshell, that's kind of it. But I know that the Mag Magma community is, is full of all kinds of people. Some we've been meeting with a lot of people here that are professionals, but there's plenty of people that just discover it and are into drawing and painting but maybe don't have the fundamental understanding and the things that you guys are laying out in this course so which is yeah. a great opportunity for you to um you know for us to be able to hear you tell you know some of the content that you guys are creating and i think all yeah. the magma users out there could probably use a course like that for sure probably i mean it's the ba it's the fundamental concept the core that pretty much branches out into anything else that you're going to want to do you know like whether you're going to go into animation or concept art or fine art or illustration um you're going to need to know these fundamental drawing concepts. Yeah. They translate over to even sculpting. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it, they're, they're important. Um, but, yeah, we do, like, oh, and also for, this course is for absolute beginners, but I will have, like, two levels for the, the whole time. So people who are absolute beginners just starting out and also intermediate people who need to still go back and, and uh, fine-tune their fundamentals... Because that's very common. It's like artists that have a few years of experience and they know about shape and edge and value, but they haven't, they're still confused about a lot of things regarding those things. And they need to go back and really go deep into it and, and get all those missing elements, get more clarity on that stuff. Yeah. And so my projects that I have in there. Each lesson is going to have two versions. There's going to be a, a beginner level project that's not intimidating. Yeah. And then there's one where you already know how, what shapes are. Let's, let's practice that same concept I just taught. But here's a slightly more challenging project yeah. where you're not just like shading a sphere. Instead, let's take a bust with a portrait and do it with that because you're, you're able to manage features of a face. Yeah. But it's the same stuff that applies to a sphere as it does to a face. Right. So let's just practice those same concepts, but with two levels of difficulty. That makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. That's a great – I've always found project-based learning is, is essential to actually apply. Yeah. Conceptually speaking, talking about the philosophies and the ideology behind some of this stuff is great. But without putting it into practice and actually having to challenge yourself and, and replicate yeah. some of these things, it just it, – you can't – it doesn't solidify in the mind. You know, you need to kind of – do it oh and sometimes over and over and over and that one project a lot probably of shading that sphere you could probably shade a hundred spheres in a week and by the time you get to that hundredth one you're going to start to feel what it's act what it what it, what you're saying to them they're gonna they're gonna yeah. see it you know yeah and that, that's something that like a lot of intermediate artists will think that they're beyond fundamentals right but they might just be misinterpreting that as they're beyond the simple exercises right but the fundamentals you're, you're never beyond that right like when will you ever be beyond shading light on form yeah right like when will you ever be beyond perspective yeah I, right <laughs> like you you have to practice that for the rest of your life absolutely like you can't get away from that stuff it's just that you can do that you can practice practice the exact same concept on a with a more challenging project um and like what you just said we're doing a, a sphere a hundred times um, there was something I read in a book recently, uh, an experiment someone did where they had student, two groups of students. One group, would, I think it was cl uh, pottery. One group spent like 100 hours on one pot. or Just making one pot. One. They were just trying to 
fine tune this process of one thing. And another group spent like an hour at a time, but they did it like a hundred times. Yeah. And then after they each group had their hundred hours, they were then tested to make a pot. And the group that spent an hour only, where mm-hmm. they just learned how to do it quickly, were way better yeah. at making the pot than the one group that was like really detailed, finessed. Yeah. Because they only did it one time. Right. It's um, this idea of, I've, I've been talking about this a lot, and this kind of has come up in almost every conversation and in different forms of art as well, digital and sculpting and, and drawing and painting. This idea of trying to perfect something, you lose the ability to uh, seeking perfection and trying to spend all this time. And I myself have worked on character projects or things that I would just keep coming back to month after month. Like I'll work on it for a couple weeks and I'm like, oh, I could do that. I could just fix this part. But if I would have just started over from scratch and taken what I've learned and then reapply it, you not only end up getting better at visualizing the stuff, but you get quicker at it too. Yeah. You're not, you, you kind of put yourself within a little time crunch and you say, I only have this much time to do it when it's done, it's done. And if I want to do it better, I should start again and keep going. And it just seems to be the best way to, to actually get results more quickly. Yeah. So that's a Absolutely. great analogy that, that scenario yeah. that you just described. Yeah. I personally think both are important because like, you're not only going to spend 100 hours practicing in your whole life. You're, you're going to spend right. thousands of hours. So you need occasionally those, you know, spending. I've, I've actually never spent 100 hours on a single drawing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I've spent 20 hours on a single drawing. Sure. Um, that was an extra. I've spent, you know, 40, 50 hours on a painting. But on a drawing where I'm, like, trying to learn something, tw- I think 20 is, like, my max. But I think you need some of those where you're really focused on perfecting it. Because that will allow you to make better decisions when you're doing it quickly. Mm. But don't just spend a long time on it. Go back and be like, I learned those little subtleties when I was doing it a long time. Now, can I do it in an hour? Yeah. Right? Right. And I, can I do that now in an hour ten times? Right. And that repetition will really solidify what you learned yeah. in, in the hour. Or if in I'm interpreting time. what you're saying correctly, it sounds like then the, you, know, you, you get the foundations. You, know, you have the fundamentals. You know, imagine you know, you're the artist. You've got the fundamentals, and you go spend that. So you're, you're capable. You have did the 100 hours, the repetition of just doing 100 of those things an hour at a time. And mm-hmm. then you go spend maybe 20 hours on one thing, and which is more about the patience part, where you're not rushing. You're just trying to be precise and learn learn the, the, the path where you can be more accurate with the strokes that you're trying to apply instead of having to maybe reapply things over to kind of get the same result. And then yeah. that precision, you can then kind of dial back and potentially be able to deliver that more quickly as exactly. you're describing later in yes. the process. Yeah, you slow down and you speed up. Right. In sports, it's the same way. Yeah. A lot of athletes train by slowing down motions and speeding up motions, mm-hmm. making things a little more challenging or making it a little bit easier. To, like when you're first starting to learn the motion of something, you kind of have to slow down and, and figure out what's your position in this part of the swing. Right. It's like, oh, no, it's a little higher. No, it's a little lower over here. Right. right. And figure it out. And then you try to do it way quicker or you put a, you put a weight on your bat. Right. Right. Totally. And you, and you try to make it harder. When you take it off, it's easier. So you, you, you kind of practice with the big like scope of what possibly could be. So, and then the middle becomes so much easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've been talking to yesterday. We had, we, we were very lucky to sit with Ray Bustos and talk about anatomy and, and form. And, and that was that conversation. We really got into just the, almost the engineering fundamentals of what makes uh, the body move and he was doing a breakdown and a demonstration of just the, the mechanics of the pelvis and the, mm-hmm. the physical distribution of length uh, of the femur and the bones and things yeah. like that. But the general concept boiled down was kind of understanding how things work before you go through and do something. Yeah. And, and, and the way I translate that is having confidence and knowing what this stuff is, which sometimes has to be applied through repetition and, and experimentation. Uh, yeah. But feeling confident in knowing how these things work in whatever capacity that is, whether it's, you know, motion or sketching or drawing or shading or lighting or whatever that is. Once you understand those fundamentals of that thing, the confidence factor allows you to go, 
I'm not scared that I'm unable to, to do this correctly because I know how it works. So I'm, I'm more confident in the strokes and the things that I apply. Exactly. And it just makes you a better artist. Yeah. I, I taught an anatomy class for six years. It took me six years to produce this course. There's, um, there are 363 lessons in this course. Oh, my God. Yeah. It literally it took me six years of full-time production where this is, I'm making videos Wow, planning everything out, Anim- 3D animation for each body part. Um, six years. Six years, and it's so it's like 77 hours of content, but it's it's not lo- like unedited. It's a very condensed 77 hours of content. Wow, it's a little much. I mean, it's a human body, yeah. so this course is meant to be used as like a resource where any time in your career you, you're struggling with. You know, the lower back. What does that look like? I'm, yeah. tr- I'm trying to draw my character, but I don't know what it is. You open up the lower back lessons, and there's your resource on the lower back. That's incredible. All the lessons are very condensed, so you can watch them in 15 minutes. Wow. Right? That's an incredibly it, valuable it, tool. Yeah. It, it's six one hours, of the things I'm most years worth proud spent. Of. I think time oh, worth yeah. spent for sure. This could last. I mean, you could hold on to this for your whole life. Yeah. I mean, oh, this yeah. Is a- and it's... That, that's what I do. It's not a membership or anything. You you buy it once and you have it forever. Okay. So, it's like buying a anatomy book that you can watch. Um, so, so, can you walk through a little bit? I think this is a really fascinating thing, and this is a, a subject that applies, I think, to pretty much all of these mediums we've been talking about. Can we look at maybe an example of how this works? Sure. Like I guess I mentioned lower back. Let's see where. Um, so that that all of these are lesson groups. You can open up each one, and there's lessons in them. Um, so that all of those are just the shoulder bones. You can open up any of them, and then arms. Ha- eat has all of those, and oh, you, yeah, you keep opening them up. There's a lot. Wow. So wait, where's the lower back? Where am I? Oh, there it is. Lower back muscles. Um, so I always start off with like the major lesson. Then I got 3D models for people to uh, they could rotate. Right in the browser, you got the 3D model. You can rotate. So you actually are you seeing the mo- the muscle in motion, or is it um, more the muscle in motion is in the video? Okay. So I will show it and I describe it. I will draw different poses. Okay. Um, the 3D model is is a static pose, so you can learn the forms. Right. But the motion and the distortion, I d- I talk about it and I teach it through the video. Yeah. So you can understand it um, with my help. Right. Um, that's and then demos, amazing. and then uh, some more detailed stuff and more demos. So these are assignment examples where I, I give people an assignment to study. I give them model photos to study from, and then I do demonstrations of each one. And then I have an ebook towards the end of it where they could print it out and it like they just need a reminder. Got it. So it's just like it, a they side have this companion. book form of all that same information. Um, and at the end, I got critiques. Um, for and, the student work. Oh, I see. So, it, the, and these critiques are just of the lower back. So, okay. it's the critique. People did all these lessons. I, I showed them the demos, and then I uh, went back, or and then they posted their assignments in the community, and then I took a bunch of them, and then I recorded a video where I'm just describing yeah. where they can improve. That's actually a really nice resource as well. And so, so this is you know former students or former people that have used use this process yes and you're using is, that as an example to you basically don't have to do that for all no people. I, you do it for a few it helps translate exactly i had a lot more people submit assignments in their community but i took the they're like it's pretty much the same like five to ten mistakes in each lesson that right. people are making so i would sort through everything organize it, and be like okay these are the best examples of all these mistakes and i and then i would go through and critique those yeah um so that w- anybody that watches it could identify like oh yeah i'm, I'm doing those three right. mistakes right um that makes perfect sense and i think that 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 is an invaluable resource i think a lot of people to be able to associate that there are like major issues that most people are going to run into that solves for anybody else somebody like myself i wouldn't need to Sometimes I don't want to send in my thing and get my thing critiqued. If I watch somebody else's get critiqued, I go, okay, I get that yeah. that's something that I'm doing myself too, yeah. and I need to correct that. Which you could still do on our platform. Like you could still post stuff in the community, mm. and um, people – like I have a team of people that go through and critique people 
okay. regularly, wow. even after the critique the videos are done. I mean, I can't go through. I mean, not, there's thousands of students. Sure. And I can't, like, I just physically cannot <laughs> critique everybody time, individually. Yeah. <laughs> but the community helps themselves. And I have people that crawl and, and help as well that wow. are approved critiquers. That is amazing. So this is one of the examples. Yeah, uh, this is okay. just a random one I pulled up. Like, like this is the intro to the, the video. It's just like 3D animation. And this is so I just great. add like really random stupid stuff in there <laughs> just to make it more interesting. I love it. Um, He's actually looking at the, is that the, uh, the lat muscles hanging the, from the Those tree? were the lower, the erector muscles okay. the, <laughs> along the spine and stuff. I don't remember why I did that. I think it's because they're just like, look like hanging ropes or something. Right. Um, <laughs> These are the but, ideas that you guys come up with. And you're like, what if we do this? And then you do it. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I'm talking this, like you can't right, hear it, but like I'm describing stuff and I'm introducing it into something here, but, or is it playing? It yeah. is playing. I can, I can subtly hear it up the TV. Oh, there's, there's little remote. dots that are popping up where I'm describing stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I simplify it. I show, ah, right. Yes. Like I'm, sh I have, I, I, I hired a lot of models that, uh, with like hundreds of hours of footage trying to get that perfect example of like the, I mean, look at those lower back muscles. You could see it so, so well. Right. And you really do need somebody who has that, that muscle definition in order yeah. to be able to visualize this shape. Because most right. of us don't have those pronounced muscles, but they are there. And the, the movement is doing the same thing. You just don't yeah. see it in the same way. Exactly. That's something that maybe is worth unpacking a little bit because I myself, I mean, I've taken, uh, you know, anatomy sculpting classes. I've taken sculpture classes with John Brown and, and other places. And, and I do a lot of digital sculpture yeah. trying to draw and start from the foundation levels. I've done that as well. But I've found that from a lot of people, maybe you can speak to this, but with your students, but the idea of understanding anatomy is super, super important. But what I tend to see a lot of people do is, um, once you, you're learning the foundations and you need to visualize those shapes, yeah. it sometimes is hard for people to learn how to suggestively show that it's there without having too much definition where, say, you don't want a super muscular character, but yeah. you want things to look correct. Yes. How does that translate from, from this stage, you know, learning the fund fundamentals to that I would consider the more advanced level understanding. Well, that's, that's actually really important in under, really understanding it. I think a lot of people that don't understand anatomy well put all the bumps everywhere. Mm. Right. Once you understand that the body, uh, like for, let's, an arm is a great example of this. When somebody's lifting something, the bicep will be flexed. But the tricep is relaxed. Right. Unless they're holding it in that position. Then the whole arm is stiff to, in order to just kind of like right. stabilize the whole arm. But in the motion of lifting, if the tricep flexes, it's going to go the other way. Right. It's, it's acting a, it, against the it's bicep. It's a pulley system. So right. you can't flex the tricep in your drawing if somebody's lifting something because that's just wrong. You'll never see that on an athlete. Right. Um, you have to actually show a relaxed state in the up opposite side. Yeah. And that's part of understanding right. the anatomy. Right. Uh, so it's not just about showing bumps. It's about truly understanding the body as a machine and why it works. That's why I show motion. And I frequently do say, you know, here's the muscle we're learning and here's the antagonist. We learn the antagonist of every muscle. The antagonist is the opposite motion. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the bicep and the tricep, they're antagonists. Right. So it's important. To totally. Understand. Yeah. And this stuff, I mean, in your experience, how long did it take you to kind of get to a place where that was just innate and you, you, you know it so well? Is it something that you constantly have to remind yourself or do you just feel, uh, do you just understand it now? Uh, well, when I learned anatomy, I, I was piecing it together with a lot of different things, a lot of books. Um, I took a few courses at Watts Atelier for anatomy, but it, anatomy is not something you can learn in like a 10 week course right. It's too much. Uh, she's watching myself do stupid <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. The six, how long, uh, when was this filmed? <laughs> this one, uh, probably like three, four or five years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But so I, for me, it took maybe like five or six times going through the whole body and just attempting to learn each part over and over again and just reviewing it. And every time I would go back and learn the lower back, I would 
find new resources on it and I would add on to my understanding of it. Yeah. Um, and so that process was like a decade for yeah. me of just like my first pass was just understanding everything enough to be able to get a general idea right. of the body right. and do some quick sketch drawings. And then the next pass, I maybe was able to shade the forms a little bit better. Um, and then the next pass, I would be able to modify things on the model. And then I would be able to invent completely. You know, it's like, right. it depends on how, how much understanding you really need right. um, to do your job or to do what you want to do. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. And I think that, that this this is always just the, the the most important thing to be able to at least spend time in your early days as an artist to kind of get get into the brain so you can do the things that you want to do without fear of, you know, yeah, making things inaccurate or not being able to properly understand it and fill it in and, and as you say, kind of create the lumpy shapes that don't really make sense, that are suggestive, that should, suggestively there, that yeah. probably shouldn't be. Yeah, absolutely. And here's like the comments. So people are posting their assignments for... For the stuff, um, let me see. Oh yeah, the, the playlist is up here. Uh, I'm just play. A, I'm not logged in, so I can't. I can't play yeah, any I, of the premium stuff. But there's a lot of free lessons. I see like, that. Yeah, there's I, a lot of. I mean, content that's part of my business model. Is I I want to provide a lot of free content for people on YouTube, so that. Um, if you can't afford the premium stuff, you can still learn from me. Mm. And then once you're, you can, then you could, you can upgrade to the premium stuff and, and go from there. Yeah. But you can get started for free. Like that you, is truly amazing yeah. and very generous of you to, to share yeah, this like, knowledge and this information with people. Yeah, like, let me go back on the homepage and see. Yeah. So if you look at right here, the, the fourth, le the fourth course on the right with the, the guy lifting his arms. Yeah. There's 115 free lessons in the wow. course. That is very cool. Yeah. That is very cool. I actually, I, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of some of the Proco content, but I did not realize that so much of this is free. Yeah, that's why there's 29 million views on it. Yeah. <laughs> Those are not premium views. If only they were. <laughs> yeah, if only they were, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so I guess um, I know we're, we're getting a little closer to the end here, but I want to just maybe unpack maybe one more thing. So that the, the, the drawing basics I would suggest for all of the magma artists out there that are going to be yeah, watching this good. content, anybody in general that wants to learn, this is a great resource. And as you transition into anatomy, all of that stuff is important. How about the the translation of that information? I see you had some a, a section on maybe stylized characters or doing more. Oh cartoony, yeah, like there's here. Let me go to all the courses. So if you just click on view all here, um, there's we have a lot of courses. Available. So, like, Color by Marco Bucci. Uh, digital Painting on the right there by John Nymeister. Ahmed Alduri has got his meds map on there. Uh, wow, you're even oh, getting into comic oh, book oh. panels. And this is quite yeah. a variety of style and yeah. application. It's a lot. We have a lot of courses. Co yeah, comics by David Finch. I mean, one of the best. Wow. Um, Very cool. And then Animal Fundamentals of Character Design by David Coleman, also one of the best. You know, Dorian teaches shading really well. Um, Antonio, Designing Dragons. Art Wad, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's got his course up on there. He made that course specifically for Proko. Um, for concept art, concept design, uh, Scott Flanders with the Character Monster Labs, amazing course. I've seen this before, Harvest yeah, Men. Shape, he, he's, he does, he's known as a shape carver. As far as shape design, shape language, he's, he's a really good friend of mine, and like he's a freaking genius. Man. Yeah, he, like, truly. Yeah. If you want to learn concept art and how to design interesting characters, that, that's the course. Um, Animal Characters by Mitch. Uh, caricature, Blender Basics. Realistic portraits, Stephen Bauman's. And yeah, you have a great guy. selection of, of professionals and people within different mediums that are showing all kinds yeah. of information here. Yeah, anyway, um, that's, our, that's our catalog. This is uh, <laughs> a truly amazing, man. I think, um, you know, just as, you know, Magma itself is, is getting into this industry and, and, you know, stepping into the tool set itself, uh -huh. the, the application is, is very much 
focusing on you know creating something by artists for artists and trying to take into consideration the tools and how these things work so it's really yeah. great to hear you know for this community to hear from people like you that have such a wealth of experience and and on providing resources that are truly the most invaluable thing to a real artist that wants to pursue a career in anything yeah so it's it's truly awesome to to get to know you and, and talk you. to you. Thanks I know you've been super on busy over here talking oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. It's a nice break, though. Nice? Okay, this good. Is good. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Man. I'm really <laughs> glad fun. to hear that. Yeah. Are you uh, going to be sculpting or rather drawing today? Um, No, we have a uh, full schedule of other artists that are coming to our booth and, and demoing, and we're recording them. We're going to edit and post that for free on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a... Yeah, we have Peter Hans right there oh, right no now. Way. He's yeah, he's right demoing now? right now. Oh man, he's, he's demoing uh, Fish Eye Perspective. Oh, it's so right cool. now. That's right amazing. behind this wall. <laughs> right behind uh, this wall. And then um, Eliza Ivanova is going to be out right okay. after him. Um, yeah, and then yeah, it's, it's been a full packed week. So no, I'm not. Dr- I can just record stuff in my studio. Nice. Uh, we're taking advantage of all these artists being here. Yeah. And trying to record their content. You know? That's very cool. Well, it's a it's a wonderful presentation. Um, I assume that this content that you guys are making over there is going to be uh, is that accessible for anybody outside of Lightbox? Yes, absolutely. Th- okay. It's going to be posted throughout the next several months. Okay. As we edit, because yeah, we don't just we don't post just like live content. We'll, we're going to edit these down to cut out any pauses or you know moments that just you don't need to watch so we'll we'll make it much more comprehensive still very complete demo uh and then post them to youtube so youtube proco tv okay uh, and you'll be able to watch all these artists youtube proco tv and uh proco.com for all these amazing resources yeah Um, and the community as well you can just go on there and post your assignments and stuff okay get help on your drawings well, again, thank you so much for these wonderful and amazing contributions. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you, you. and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing more from you guys in the future. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, Appreciate cheers. It.